think it's common that people think of human trafficking and they think of the movies and they think of Hollywood and they think of, you know, ships of people coming across the ocean. And while those things are happening, it's not always this huge scale thing. It's happening in our backyard. It's happening next door. Um, and those are the ones that are slipping through the cracks because people don't believe it's happening and people don't understand it. In the last few months, there was a community member that was reported missing by her teenage daughter. There were some telltale signs. She didn't look the way that she normally did. She looked malnourished. She had some new tattoos, had been around some gangs down in Minneapolis. It was pretty clear that she was most likely being trafficked out of Minneapolis, but she didn't think she was. She didn't see herself as a victim. Um, we tried to get her out of the situation by arresting her on a probation violation just to talk to her away, away from everybody else. She still didn't see herself as a victim, didn't see anything wrong. Her daughter didn't see her as a victim any longer because mom said she wasn't. Um, so she was bailed out. She's normally an individual that we deal with a couple times a month. I think this was about six months ago and I have not seen her or heard her name since she was bailed out of jail. When you look at the warning signs and the commonalities that victims of this crime have, a lot of the things that attract traffickers to their victims are issues that tribal communities are already combating, aside from trafficking. Poverty, drug abuse, drug addiction, things of that nature. And everyone sees trafficking as such a global issue that they don't think that it's happening in these rural communities, but the fact of the matter is that it is. The Trust Task Force is the Tribes United Against Sex Trafficking Task Force. It was started in 2018. Um, the goal of it was to get all of the tribes that are federally recognized throughout the state of Minnesota to work together collaboratively on these investigations and to learn from each other. I think it's really important to realize and understand what these victims are going through and that it's not like your everyday crime. The public is going to see that before cops are. They're the ones that are gonna see those red flags. They're the ones that, you know, maybe you see the same person in the same spot every day when you're walking downtown and it starts to get to you. You're gonna see that. I'm not gonna see that downtown. Um, and those are the things where if people recognize the signs, those flags are gonna start to go off in, those, in their head and they're gonna think maybe I need to say something. Before I was a police officer, I was a dispatcher for several years, and we find that people are always afraid to call 911. They think that they're wasting our time or that it's nothing. And at the end of the day, we would rather look into a hundred things that maybe lead us to one victim than not have anything to look into and miss 10 victims. So easiest way, call 911. There's also the national hotline. There's the Your Call Minnesota hotline. There's a number that you can text. Those are all ways that you can do it, but if all else fails and you can't find those numbers, call 911, say it's not an emergency, but something, something doesn't seem right and you want to talk to an officer about it.